Man, our pond is absolutely chocked full of algae to the point where I'm really worried about whether the fish are gonna make it or not. Thankfully, today we have a plan and we're gonna do something about it. This actually works really well. All we gotta do is scale it up, do the whole pond, all one rake. It's a little killdeer bird. It sounds like killdeer when it sings, but uh, there must be a nest over here somewhere in the rocks because it's doing that flappy injured wing dance. It wants to draw predators away from the nest. So if it fakes that it's got a broken wing, it distracts them long enough. So she's coming back in right over here. What's up? Where's your nest? We don't want to step on it. They're going to be super camouflaged, which is probably why she put it here. Oh, look at that. See, she'll come in. She's totally fearless right now <laughs> because her nest is more important than her own safety. Where's your nest? I don't want to step on it. See, she's like, ah, oh, my arm hurt. Come get me, don't get my nest. We better be close to it anyway. Where's your nest, your turkey? She started out over here. Well, we're not faking. Now you're not faking anymore. You guys see that egg anywhere? How about now? You see that egg yet? About now, you guys see that egg? Come on, find the egg. How about now? Can you see the egg? So, the plan to get rid of this algae, we got a pool noodle rig system set up. Well, we're setting it up right now. What we're gonna do is we're gonna attach two pool noodles. We had three just in case. We're gonna use a run of uh, meshing. That's gonna be the rake. So the noodle is gonna float the rake up in the water column. And then we're gonna either be able to pull it so low, but probably thinking maybe two kayaks and use this as a rake to draw all the algae to one spot and then use a dip nut to pick it up. That's the plan. We'll see if it works. Have you guys got a good name for this? this Alginator? The Alginator, that's what it was. I got it. The Alginator 2020. Let's call it the Alginator 2020. If you guys have a better one. The Sliminator 2020. I think the Alginator is like pretty appropriate. You guys would buy this. The Alginator 2020. For manually removing algae from your pond. We are not hireable. <laughs> no, it comes, it does not come with labor. That's you who supply the labor. Cost of four portal noodles and some scrap chicken wire. I don't know, all in maybe, well the scrap didn't cost us anything. It's a pool noodle, so we got like 10 bucks in the pool noodles there. That's it, yeah, pretty good deal. Saving our fish, the manual way. How much did we lose there? <laughs> Off of it? No, it's just a simple matter of scooping it out, or so we hope, a brand new net, just for that purpose. Yeah, it seems to work all right. Oh yeah, that's a lot of algae. This is obviously the manual method. I'm gonna have to explore the commercial method. I mean, the chemical method. So obviously they did a pretty good job, but there's quite a bit that's slipping out the edges. So we, uh, we have another couple pool noodles. We can actually expand it so that it'll go all the way across. I think that's the trick. And add two more noodles so we can make it two more noodles wide, which is two more noodles wide. An official measurement. <laughs> That's right. Noodle width. Noodle width. For me, I'd need her six noodles wide. Well, this size is a little bit more unwieldy. <laughs> but it's going to rake a heck of a lot more. All right, so this is attempt number two with the longer one. It's a bit more... Bit more patient on this one because we got to get twice the cage going here. Twice the cage, twice the effort. It's like if we had this, if we had some gill net on here, we could clean this whole lake right out, including the fish. Yeah. <laughs> this is like this could be the Bassinator 2022. Just drag the gill net around. 
Oh man, look how well this works, man. This is like, yeah. the Algenator 2020. It's getting weighty already. I know that's thing. <laughs> oh man, look at that. Look how well that's working. Yeah, you know what? It slides really good, actually. Like once you got the momentum going, it's not. It's weighty, but it's uh, the water is coming out of the back of the algae. So just gonna switch sides here because Mark can't get through this section here. So he's gonna swap sides. He's gonna go to the other side. Hey, we could just wall it off here and leave it there. But then if it dies here, it's gonna pollute the water and it's gonna go anoxic real fast. And then once it happens, it depletes the oxygen. It can be beneficial, but it can also harm. While it's blooming, it's fine. But at night and on cloudy days, or when it's dying, it takes oxygen out of the water. During the day, it produces, and when it's sunny, it produces oxygen for the fish. So it can work for you or against you, but if it gets all choked off, dies at the top, the bottom algae can't survive, and then that kills off the top algae and the bottom algae, and then it's completely wiped out. All right, I gotta watch my waders a little bit here too. There is a, there is a little bit of a hole. Oh, going the wrong way, that's why. I'm gonna go up to the bank here. Let's see how well it handles the shore business. I'm gonna get this up as high as we can. Maybe we can pull it all the way on the shore, that'd be great. I don't know, once we hit the bottom though. Yep. Can you scoop it up with your hands? Almost. <laughs> oh, look at that sludge. You could, you could really flip it out by hand. You could. It would take a long time. You're way faster than that. Look at all that. So a few of you guys have asked me throughout the years, do I fly fish? And the answer is I have fly fished, I can fly fish, but I just don't fly fish all that often. The reason is, I really don't have a good place to fly fish at. This is not the room. It's not the room to back cast. But now I've got a place that I can fly fish on my own. Oh, let's see how easy it is to catch a fish. Got a dry fly on here. Let's set that down on the water. And we'll wait and see. You see that fly out there? You might think there aren't any fish in here, but I know there are. I put them in here. And let's throw some feet out there, see if they're still around. Well, there they are. <laughs> I gotta train a trout how to eat a fly too. <laughs> it's ridiculous. Oh, there's one. There we go, finally we got one. Is that a bass? I freaking caught a bass. <laughs> That's hilarious. That makes me laugh. Oh well, that'll be one less bass anyway. Look at that, silly bass. I don't really care what I catch right now, but I do want to catch some dinner. So if after a little while I can't catch a trout on a fly, I will for sure use a worm. I should be able to catch a trout with a worm. A lot of people think fly fishing is relaxing. It is one of the most frustrating things you can ever learn how to do. It will test your patience. There's one. You guys see that? That's probably another bass. We're gonna go with another bass. We don't mind that. Yeah, for sure another bass. Well, the bass know what food is, that's for sure. The trout, I have no clue. I wanna keep this out of the mess here. Or line to worry about here. There he goes, another bass. One more bass. These guys know what food is. I forget where I had it last time. I think closer to 
the uh, edge there up in those reeds. I think that would be the optimal place there. I think that's a good spot. So rip, pause, rip, rip, pause, rip. Oh, there we go. So did you guys see that? Just when that, hear that sound, that water riffle, the twitch, that's what you want. Otherwise you miss the fish. But these bass are really, really hungry because they're not eating the pellet feed. They have to eat whatever they can find. They have no choice. We are continuing to take these fish out. I actually made a really big meal and I should have probably filmed it, but I, uh, I deep fried them and they were really, really, really good. There's four. If I can get a bunch of these, I can maybe make a meal out of it. You need a lot though. I don't know if I can teach you guys how to fly fish here, but the basic premise is you let the line carry it out. It's all about timing. Once you get that straightened out, you can do whatever you want, mostly. So the fly itself is not heavy enough to carry the line out. So you're basically loading the line. Oh, I see a little boil. There it is. There. So that one grabbed it just kind of below the surface, but it did, did suck it back. Well, I'm kind of happy that the bass are taking the flies because then we can we have another weapon of getting rid of these bass. My guess is there's still quite a few of them. Oh yeah, there's four four bass following that guy in. Man, we could do this all day, couldn't we? This is fun. I'm gonna admit it's fun, but I still want my food. I'll have to switch to alarm, I guess, to catch an actual trout. There's a guy who contacted me on Facebook not too long ago. He was in a fishing tackle supply store and he asked me what I thought you should buy. And I said, dude, all I use is a hook and a worm. A hook and a worm will catch almost everything. You won't be able to catch a pike with it, but you can catch a bass with it. Although I would recommend you use a different style hook than just a straight up J. <laughs> oh, they are, take, are actually going to take it. There we go. There we go. Oh, that's a good fighting trout. There we go. So our trout know what worms are. <laughs> this was very lightly hooked and very healthy fight on that fish. There we go, guys. I think if we switch to like a sinking uh, fly, we'd probably have better luck. Oh, mosquito. There we go. If I can catch, say, three about this size, that'll be enough for a meal for my family. So I'd rather keep catch some of the bigger ones, but I mean, we've got this size all the way through two, three pounds. Good variety. And these are, these are eaters in my book. We'd like to see them get bigger, but as a first catch, we'll take it. All right, let's see if we can catch uh, fish number two. Seeing as how we had a pretty darn good reaction to fish number one, I'm pretty sure we can catch one almost right away. <laughs> Probably before before it even hits the ground. Oh yes, and we are indeed correct. Oh, and this is a little bit bigger one. Oh, nice fight on that. Wow. Jeez, these got some vigor. Whew. That's got some fight in it. Wow. <laughs> That's pretty darn impressive. Okay, now we're talking. That one took it a lot deeper. Wow. That's a little football. There we go, fish number two. Let me get my hook back out. All right guys, let's see if we can get fish number three in three casts. <laughs> I think we can do it. And that'll be my limit for today. I only want three, three for my family. Me, Courtney, Holden. Right away. <laughs> <laughs> That's ridiculous. <laughs> These guys are hungry. <laughs> we got her detached. That was easy. 
Well, they know what worms are now. And uh, I'm actually going to dump the rest of those worms in there too. So let's get this guy out. Wow, these guys have some vigor, I'll tell you what. Compared to like a wild fish, these, there's so much more to these guys. There we go. That's it. That was just a nerve. There we go. Fish number three. All right. So there's a limit. That's just how easy it is to fish out of a stocked pond, guys. <laughs> oh, geez. Still alive. I got to knock this guy out again. All right. There we go. <laughs> now let's go cook him up. Make some food for my family. I'm just going to clean these up real quick. I'm just going to gut them because I actually want to cook these my preferred method. And my preferred method only requires gutting them. So we're just going to go up through the cavity. But what I'm curious to see is actually what these fish are eating. And we can do that by checking the gut cavity. So we'll get the stomach out here. Um, and then we'll have a peek. Now there's lots in the digestive system and that's, I mean, that's to be expected. That's all uh, food mash. That's the pellet feed. That's the brown stuff. Nothing surprising there. Um, yeah, it's all just the brown mash. The stomach has mash. It, they're just eating. They're basically just eating the pellet feed at this point. Um, there might be some small insects in there, but nothing to really worry about. You might wonder why I'm throwing it back in there. Well, actually I'm throwing it back in there because I'm hoping to feed the snapping turtle. There's one snapping turtle that's left in there and if I keep feeding it, it's not gonna be tempted to eat the actual fish. At one point in time, I'm gonna catch that snapping turtle. Would you guys like to see if we strap a camera to the back of the snapping turtle? I think that would be kind of cool. She saw a video the other day of somebody actually doing that. It's pretty neat. So all I did was empty the gut cavity. Ow, just trees poking my butt. And then uh, I'm gonna go home and cook these because my family's gonna be eating these. All right, I'm gonna show you how a really cool way to make a boneless filet from your fish. So we're just gonna cut the rest here. The reason we do this is because we'll get the most out of this fish as possible. There's a lot of ways to do it. You can actually cook all the way through and then pull the bone out. We've done that a few times. But the main culprit here is the rib cage down in here. You cook the whole fish whole, you can actually pull the rib cage out without too many issues. Um, but the problem is when you add your seasoning, if you put the seasoning on the inside, you're going to lose all the seasoning. So I'm just gonna run down the backbone here and cut the ribs out. Now I've seen Ray Mears do this and he pulled the backbone out of a fish and all the ribs came out too. Now I tried it and then I, I came to the conclusion that the only reason he was actually able to do it was because his fish was pretty much rotten. If you fillet your fish in the same way along the back, you'll actually end up with the same kind of problem. You'll lose a whole lot of meat. You can see I have lost practically no meat and there's a little bit of meat on the backbone. I normally wouldn't pull the backbone out at all. I would I'd normally leave that in there. Melted butter. Just cake that on there. Tons of melted butter. And then we'll add our wadobo spice. And you can grab that on Fowler's Makery and Mischief website. And then over on this side here, I have uh, a tray with a grate on it. Now it's important to use the grate and it's also important to have a drip catch to it. That's gonna brown and crisp. I'm gonna put it in the oven for 375 until it's done. And then if I really wanna be aggressive about it, I can add some more butter and add some more spice. The, uh, the top will crisp really nicely. I try to taste first. That's perfect. Is this wadobo? Amazing. Mmm, so good. It's boneless too. Yeah, what the heck? What'd you do? To watch the video. Uh, I'm just gonna eat the whole thing if you let me. 
you get one fish. Oh, come on. This is awesome. But seriously, Dad, what's with the heads? Seriously? It's to eat to suck the eyeballs out. <sighs> hey, save some for me. <laughs> okay, what do I do? Suck the brain. Just like back here? No, the eyeball part. Oh, right through the ball. <laughs> yeah, suck the ball. Yeah, it's not gonna happen. Come on. Nope, nope, nope. That's just wrong. You can do it though. See? Yeah. Suck it. No. Thanks though. For the offer. Appreciate it. Are you laughing at me? <laughs> you know what you're saying. <laughs> I'm saying stuff. <laughs> does it make sense though? To me it does. Okay. Well, there's other people to consider, right? I consider you. Do you? Yeah. Oh. You say it then. I don't know what you're supposed to say. I forget. You Something haven't? about uh, sharing, liking, commenting, <laughs> full stopping. <laughs> I don't ask I for I care those. about you people. <laughs> if you guys are enjoying this series or any of my videos, make sure you hit the notification button. That's huge. I check my statistics and YouTube is barely sending any notifications out. But if you hit the bell icon and you make sure you ask for all notifications, they say they're fixing the system. So please do that. I appreciate your support. It's helping me keep this channel going. Thanks, thanks for coming along.